All right, so Dino Day is over. It did not go as planned. Let's just say that. We did like 13 pulls, not alter red line, because we had issues left and right. The car was just seeing extremely high temperatures. One, two, that's crazy. Boost hoses flying. Traction left on. Dino guy didn't do as good as he should have. I'm not gonna blame him the whole time, believe me. It was Apex Auto Works and Clifton. Shout out to them for letting us go there. I was supposed to do three pull stock, three pulls tuned, 13. So he did what he could, but it just didn't go as planned. We had a phase three 500 at Barth that did higher numbers than me, both uh, horsepower and torque, yet I beat him on the road. These dino numbers don't make sense, put it that way. And after 13 tries, I can say we don't even have one dyno pull that I can confidently say, yeah, that's the power. Let it be if it's the stock tune or the phase two tune. So if you came here to see just dyno numbers, like, oh, what did it do stock to tune originally? This is what it was supposed to be. Then don't even bother watching. It's not gonna be that. But if you wanna know what the hell happened, all the issues that went down, why the 124 does not like being on a dyno, then stay tuned. We're gonna cover all of that. You can't make this stuff up. But luckily, I have a video. I left my GoPro in like that POV style video while the car was on the dyno. So haters hate, do whatever you want to do. But I got all the videos here showing what happened. And I'm just kind of putting it out there like I always do. There's nothing to hide. Although I did do this because there were so many people talking about it. And I wanted to try and bring this to you guys. I tried. I did my best. Nobody told me to do this. Your compulsion didn't say go out and do this. I went, my time, my money, I paid for these dyno pulls, put it out there, show what happened, show the issues. The car is strong as hell on the road. It just needs airflow. When it's sitting on the damn dyno getting heat soaked and it can't take advantage of the good intake and the intercooler, because I'm personally running the V4 intake from your compulsion and their race intercooler. Two parts that really do extremely well at keeping the car cool while on the road and air is being fed into it. But on a dyno where it ain't moving and it's being heat soaked, and you have some crappy fans because the shop didn't have the best fans. Well, this is what happens. So let's dive in. I'm gonna show you the videos. I'm gonna try and keep this kind of short. Maybe I'll do separate parts to go more in depth because believe me, this can easily be a very long video. So let's just dive in and show you what happened, the actual videos, and you can see it all for yourself and drop a comment. You know what I mean? Give your own opinion and thoughts on this. We'll show you the dyno polls. I'll speak a little bit about the dyno numbers. Uh, talk about what happened and even show you the pulls with the 500 of Barth with the phase three and believe me I was very surprised too that I was able to uh, keep up with him in some parts and actually get him as well in some so let's dive in if you're interested subscribe for more all right so here we are like I said I have the GoPro facing the front so I told the dyno guy right now we're about to do the first pull it just got strapped on I was the first car getting dynoed I told him to cycle through my P3 gauge until we got to intake air temps. So here we are with the intake air temps, and this is the first thing he says. Okay, so pretty One, that's crazy. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. 127 before we even did a pull. So now we're doing pull one on phase two. He thought my car would make like six pounds of boost. This is what he said afterwards. And that's why when he tapped into where I tapped a T to get my boost source for my gauge, he tapped his own T in there so I can be fed boost source to my boost gauge, but then he could also get it on the dyno charts. He didn't zip tie it though, and you'll see what happened right here. So as you can see, the hose flew off before, like, before halfway through that run. And I'm standing far back videotaping. So the other thing too, as you just saw right there during phase two, this kept happening, the blow of that, it just kept like spewing out, I don't know, excess something, I don't know. But it only happened on the phase two where it is boosting like five, six pounds more, I think I red line. And stock one, it didn't do it. Phase two, it was doing it. We didn't, I didn't know if it was something serious or not, but the car drove fine afterwards. And even the next few days I data logged it, did some pulls and the car looked healthy. All the numbers looked fine. So the other thing was that boost hose that flew off. I can't see this. I'm like 10, 15 feet behind the dyno videotaping. You know what I mean? And I wish the dyno guy would have noticed either on the gauge or on the chart that this came off, but he didn't. So this pull, the second pull, the third pull, no boost source. And what I tapped was, I think it was the intake manifold hoses that also, I believe, is causing a boost leak because it's 
right where it's pushing boost pressure out. So I don't know 100%, but I was told that area in the intake manifold hose where I tapped in, if it's open and flew off, that can cause a boost leak. So let's quickly just go through and you'll see uh, pull two and pull three as well. Nothing different, we'll skim through it. And as you can see, there is no boost source. It's reading negative 0.2 because it's not connected. So now after those three runs, just a little bit after, it wasn't like the second after, but a little after I was like, cycle through the intake air temperatures, let's see what they are. This is what the intake air temps were right after those three runs. It was 127 in the beginning, and now... Probably all of it, 144? 144. 144. 144, that's insane. I was even told like, from other folks, they're surprised nothing else happened with the car. Basically everything that could go wrong went wrong besides the car blowing up on the dyno, put it that way. So now pull number four on phase two. We weren't gonna do another pull, but he went, he zip tied the, that connection. Now the car is extremely hot. And guess what? He left traction control on. So after three hot, hard pulls, now we have a fourth pull, which is just basically abusing the car. And check out the intake air temps on this one. 138 right now. All right, yeah, it's I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it run like, like with just a little load on it and see if it drops. It's not really dropping. We dropped down to 133. So now we have intake air temps at 133 at the beginning of the run and traction left on. So there you go, those four poles, which were supposed to be my phase two results of tuned, we have no boot source, possibly causing a leak for the first three runs, insane intake air temps from 127 to one, probably closer to 150 for those three runs. And then the last run, traction left on, starting in the 130s for intake air temperatures. Those numbers are freaking out the window to me, to be honest. We'll still cover them later, but they're out the window. Now, the 500 apart that went on later, my car was in a dyno for two freaking hours. When it came off the dyno, his went on. His car was sitting there for two hours. So his car just had three clean, smooth pulls, that's it. And his numbers read higher than mine. But like I said, I still took him on the road. And weight could be a difference, but those cars are only like, what, 70 pounds heavier, I think? Anyway, I flashed back to stock. We did stock pulls. We had the boost hose connected this time. But to my surprise, it peaked the same boost. It held the same boost up until RPM, uh, higher RPMs. And that's where it kind of fell to like 10, maybe 11, 10 PSI, instead of 16 to 15. So mid range, the car and the boost curve looked identical. Even the dyno guy said it when you looked at them, they looked identical. They peaked around 24, they held around 20 to 21, up until what, maybe 5,000, 5,500. And then that steady drop happened where tuned it went to like 16, 15, and then stock it went to like 11, 10. But We'll look at this. Oh, and the intake air temps, as you're about to see, were much, much cooler because now it was sitting for 15 minutes while I flashed it back, maybe even more, like 15, 20 minutes. Did the flashback to stock, car was off the entire time. I think the intake air temps were about like 117, 118, so let's see that. That's also gonna add, imagine, you're doing it at 130 to 140. Now you're starting in the teens, 110, 117 or whatever, you know? IT, we're looking at 117. Yeah, so 117 to start versus 127 to start. And it doesn't even go as high in the stock tune. It's not pushing as much boost. So it's really not a comparable, let alone that the tuned results were not right. It's not even a good comparison because the intake air temps are just all over the place. They're so different. Now on this one, you can't really even see the boost hitting the 24 because his hand was in the way, but you'll see in the other two that it does. And you also notice that, that the blow valve isn't spewing whatever the hell it is coming out from the top, but you also notice that the boost is going all the way down. 
to like 10, you know, PSI by the end of the run. So as you saw there, it basically was what, 20, high 23s, almost 24 PSI on that one. And as you see there, the intake air temperature is 127 after two pulls, after two pulls. When it was tuned, it was 127 before I even did the first pull. Rolled the thing on a dyno, started it, 127. But after sitting for 20 minutes and doing two pulls, now it's, only, it's, it's still 127. So these numbers obviously are not gonna be anything good to compare to, this, to the tuned one, let alone that the tuned runs were completely out of whack to begin with. The comparison of stock to tuned isn't gonna make sense either. Like I said, there's nothing went right today, that day. I just said nothing went right. Honestly, the boost curve here is almost exactly the same. You're just peaking 24, and then it sort of holds just about 21, and tapers exactly. straight down. The, like it tapers more than the than the two, but, but it's still peaking and holding about the same. Yeah, the let's do run two to run two, I guess, right? Oh, we can't see boost to boost. That's right. So you're saying, what was the theory of holding more boost on the stock of that? Uh, I feel like it might have been like seeing some detonation had not trimmed in all the way. Because remember, we recorded boost on the last run. Okay. So that was the fourth. So let's go back and get a nice clean tune run. So go ahead and flash okay. it. All right. Flash it back to tune. I'll do at least one or two runs on the tune. All right. One more time, and, and we'll. we'll go off and then our... Yeah, because now it was like we did nice, three nice runs with a cold. cold. Yeah, yeah. That was run number four. It got significantly hot. All right, so as you heard him say, the boost curve looked identical, both with stock and phase two. Basically, phase two was acting more like a phase one tune almost. It was identical and it just fell off a little bit more on the top end. Um, we weren't gonna do it, but he said, you know, flash it back to phase two, we'll do another pull or two. That one or two pulls turned into like trying another, like whatever, eight times. I think only one actually went to red line. So, and it's unfortunate because this time, the intake air temps are lower, 115 to start. Uh, it actually did go up maybe a little bit, I forget, but basically the intake air temps were lower because again, 20 minutes, it was off, we flashed back. Boost went up to 27 PSI, like it's supposed to, not 24. This would have been a good true phase two run. But you'll see what happened. It started getting wastegate issues, blow off valve was going off. It was kind of over boosting and cutting off, boosting, cutting off, boosting, cutting off. And it kept getting that. And we think it's a mix between one, the cart, apparently people say it and now I could tell it's true. It needs to adapt to the tune. It needs X amount of miles, certain amount of miles. Now he did drive a little bit on the dyno to let it cruise. Obviously it wasn't enough. The high intake air temps, the exhaust gas temps. I know when I did some data logging before, I saw it anywhere from like 13 to 15, high 15s, 1600. I actually once cracked 1700 when I was doing like really hard data logging. But mind you, this is on the road with airflow. So on the dyno, who knows how high that got? And I was told having those crazy high, both intake air temps and exhaust gas temps, the cat temps and everything, that the car will start pulling boost, pulling throttle, pulling all different things to try and compensate and be safe, which in return is going to not make the numbers great but it's doing it for safety reasons. So that's why I don't think this car is great on the dyno. It needs really good airflow. I've done data testing on the road. That's where you really see the difference. I want to do it on the dyno because everyone's always talking about it. You know, they want to see it. And you know me, I'm always trying to bring stuff. I'm always just trying to provide, hopefully, value that you guys enjoy. But this day just did not work out. So phase two, reflash. Let's see what happens. We're gonna hit 27 PSI. It's not gonna go under the hood. You'll see the note there. It doesn't, the blow valve isn't doing it. It only does it when it like boosts all the way up. Again, I don't know exactly what that is, but let's take a look. We'll see what happens here. Like 
steady state in a few different spots when like mild boost to give like a chance to like learn the way skate. It doesn't figure it didn't know it doesn't have the way it gets it's like it's closed loop system essentially, right? So this one right here is the only pull after flashing back that it actually made it to red line. It kind of hiccuped a little bit, like it overboosted and wastegate kind of was releasing air, but then it went to red line. Again, the car is just super hot at this point. It's not feeling well. So after this run, I actually put OBD Fusion on connected to the car because I want the data log myself. Because we were the air to fuel ratio was looking a lot of whack, but we were doing it through the exhaust, you know, valves, um, whatever pipes. And I have the quad system, it's the regular right zone, it's valve. It's all over the place. And he even said, if one thing is off, that's gonna read crazy. And every time I data logged, it was smooth, 11 and change, you know, right through across the line on full throttle. So unfortunately, after this semi-smooth pull. I put OBD Fusion on and we went right back to having issues. It kind of just overboosted the light slightly at the beginning, but then it just instantly corrected. All right, so don't freak out right now. It's not an intake air temperature. I don't think my engine would exist right now if that was intake air temperature. We switched it to the exhaust gas temps, and that's why you're seeing over a thousand. This was like well after the run anyway. It was already cooling off, and you could tell it's dropping quick. We were just talking, so that's what's that on. Just so you know. As far as goofy, it's what? It's like kind of goofy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We're we're picking it up at the tailpipe. You know what I mean? Like. If there's any leak or any sort of reverberation where it could be pulling in fresh air, because yeah. you have quad exhaust system. So now as you can see, I connected OBD Fusion, and unfortunately now, again, the car did not want to act right on the dyno, and I couldn't even get one pull in while connected, so I couldn't even get a good data login. Don't make 22 pounds of boost, make 26 now. And now it's trying to do it and it's overshooting. And I guess, you know, in a PC puts like a hard cap. He's like, okay, if you hit 28 pounds or 27 pounds, stop making boost. And so it's it's bouncing between like cutting and trying to make boost. So it cuts, that's it makes boost. And that's why it's like, going to, because yeah. it's a cycle between hits cut, tries to make boost, hits cut, tries to make boost, hits cut. So it's it's not able to learn how much boost it needs. All right, that's what it is. Yep. I'd, I'd work on it more, but it's 4, four o'clock, I'll close yeah, at 4.30. Yeah, okay. you, you'd be able to dial this in though, if you want to, right, you think? I mean, from here, he just needs to drive it. Just drive it, oh. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's anything wrong with the tune, he just needs to drive it. So yeah, as you could tell, even my friend at the end of the video was like, oh, do you think you can dial this in or whatever? And even the, the dyno guy even said like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, he just needs to drive it. So in conclusion, the 124, people say it can't be dynoed. This was before, like I said, before my time, the arguments, I've seen this stuff on the forum. I know nothing about that. Like I haven't really looked into it that much. It's not that the 124 can't be dynoed. It's that it does not like being on the dyno without having airflow. So I heard it's like the intake air temps are 30, 35 degrees over ambient temps. It's not too good for the car. It was in like, I think the mid eighties, let's say 85 or so out there. So I was seeing 130 to 144 for most of those tune poles. For the stock one, I was seeing like, you know, give or take 30 degrees over or something. But for the tune ones, I was seeing some insane numbers. We don't even know what the exhaust gas temperatures were, but they're probably up there and they're probably causing issues. The car was getting zero airflow. The fans they had were those big circular fans. I'll throw videos up showing when I was like recording from different angles. They didn't have the best airflow. Um, yeah, like I don't know how else to put it, but the car just needs airflow. It needs to breathe. And when on the dyno, especially in my example here, between the car just being overheating with the intake air temps, causing issues with the tune back and forth, it wasn't adapting right. And then you throw all this heat into the mix and the car is trying to pull now. Now it's between trying to adapt tunes and trying to pull things to like be safe. So it's like, oh, you just threw a really strong tune at me, but I'm also not even at the right temps to almost run a stock tune. You know what I mean? So it's just all out of whack. And then you got the hoses flying off, possibly causing a boost leak. You got traction being left on. Again, I sound like a broken record, but it is what it is. This is what happened. So basically, if you guys have more information on this, drop a comment, leave your opinion. So now let's talk about the numbers that the car put down on stock in phase two, even though there's really no point, but we'll just talk about it anyway. 
and then we'll talk about my friend Marco's car that put down what he put down with his Phase 3 500, and then show you the races. And again, nothing makes sense. You know, my car probably was meant to put down a lot more power than his. You know, let's just dive into it and see. All right. So keep in mind these numbers are on a Mustang dyno, which reads lower than a dyno jet. And on top of that, I asked the dyno operator to also have the front wheels have some load on them, which I was told could even furthermore read lower. And the reason was, I don't care about how low it read. I wanted the before and afters. And unfortunately, we couldn't get that. So the numbers are gonna read low regardless. The dyno operator said to divide by 0.85 to get the approximate dyno jet numbers. So I'm gonna be showing you that too, cause like 99% of the folks out there are showing dyno jet numbers. So we'll talk about what we got on the Mustang dyno, uh, not optimal to begin with and then we'll use that conversion just to see what it would have came out to so my car wheel horsepower phase two was 173 and wheel torque was 200. stock it did 148 and wheel torque was 186. again i'm not even going to bother putting emphasis on this because it just doesn't make sense if you were to correct it it would be 204 horsepower on phase two and 235 torque on phase two now, if we go to Marco's car with his 500 of Barth Phase 3, he put down 185 wheel horsepower, 215 wheel torque. If you do the correction, that's 217 wheel horse and 253 wheel torque. Now, for everyone says the your compulsion numbers don't match, you can go to their website, or maybe I'll throw the screenshot on here. I, I don't have it side by side right now, but I looked at it. My Phase 2 is very similar to their Phase 2 advertisements, and Marco's Phase 3 is very similar to their Phase 3 advertisements. After doing the correction, mind that. I believe they have uh, their dyno, I think it's a dim sport, which I don't really know much about to be honest. I tried Googling, nothing out there really talks about it. They're very rare. And I think uh, they said it actually reads higher than a dyno jet. So if that's true, that puts the numbers in favor for these numbers in the sense that like, they're accurate. They're gonna. They're close to what your compulsion states. Mustang reads the lowest and dyno, dyno jet than dim sport, but I don't know 100%. And I don't even want to, um, what do you call? There's no point to even compare these. I'm just putting them here because I said I was going to. So here they are. They don't make sense. I wouldn't do anything with them, but there they are. We're gonna be going to the airstrip soon and getting some zero to 60 and quarter mile, 4,100, all that stuff. That's gonna be true data. All right, so here are the polls now. We did four polls. The first one, I don't know what happened. You're gonna have to look in my rear view mirror for a few of them. In a couple, you'll see him side by side with me, depending on the camera. But on, I think the first one and one of the other ones, look in the rear view mirror. That's where you're gonna see him either catching up or going away from me. It's gonna be very small, but it's just the way I had the camera position. I couldn't do anything about it. Maybe something happened on the first run because he kind of flew back very quickly, but we'll watch all four, let's see. So that was the first poll. Like I said, I don't know what happened. I think he said he left the air on for the first and the second. So keep that in mind on our cars, a car that's lightweight, not making a ton of power, the air is gonna make a difference. Probably not that much of a difference, but it's gonna make a difference. But then he said he turned it off for the third run and the fourth run, which you'll see. And keep in mind, this was done before the dyno too. This was done on the way to the dyno. So let's watch it. Oh, and real quick, this one here. So that first poll was second gear, both of us. I could have sworn we kind of were talking through the cars and I could have sworn he said, go to third on this one. So I'm in third, he's starting in second. He gets a huge jump on me, which makes complete sense being in second and I'm in third, he's got a bigger turbo. Gets maybe what, a car and a half or something? But then after that, check out what happens. He did not take away from me at all. So as you saw, he was a whole gear below me. Makes sense that he went ahead right away. But then after that, I was maybe slowly creeping. He was a little ahead. It was, it was very, very neck and neck, which is extremely surprising considering he's got the bigger turbo and he should have been uh, pulling a little bit more up top, I would think. Coming 
up, Mr. Popcorn Maker over here. That was third gear, both of us, and I got him a little bit, and then he wouldn't keep up. It was, I was looking at him, maybe half a car, three quarters of a car. As you saw, those were the four poles. And even though his car made more power, more torque, it weighs give or take about the same, less than a hundred pound difference. You know what I mean? You saw that, it's not a hundred pound difference in weight. So my car, I would say is probably putting down some decent power. We don't know what it is. Honestly, I don't really care at this point. Uh, dyno numbers, looking to stroke your ego. You know what I mean? You want to brag about it. That's probably more what the dyno numbers are for. Because you can go somewhere and just read a, ton, a lot higher. And this is the perfect example. His car read higher than mine. The amount is quicker on the street, you know? So I'm excited. Pretty soon, we're going to go to the airstrip. I'm going to try and get some more data. Data that I think is more authentic and realistic to view and talk about than dyno numbers. Although I did do this because there were so many people talking about it. And I wanted to try and bring this to you guys. I tried. I did my best. Nobody told me to do this. Your compulsion didn't say go out and do this. I went, my time, my money, I paid for these dyno poles. Marco paid for his dyno poles. We just met up for the first time because we're local and that's it. So if you guys are excited about some future content about this car and others, go ahead and subscribe. Check out drivendistrict.com if you want to pick up some merch and some performance parts as I started adding a couple parts. I got more on the way that I'll be adding as well. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Uh, that's it, man. I'm out, you know. That's all I can say about this. The 124 doesn't like being on the dyno. It likes real airflow. That's about it. Catch you guys in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bang. Boom. Crunch life.